So, Savitri answers the sage of the fixed mind that, sorry, you are inviting me to stay here, but I cannot stay here. This is not my place. This is not the place which is going to satisfy me. I am in search of my soul and I must move on. He says, Here I can stay not, for I seek my soul. That is the search. Now by what is it that she knows that she would not find her soul here? It is already in her the perception that this world has limitations, this world does not have the power which she is seeking. She has to meet eventually death and conquer him. She would not get the strength here. She has that discernment. She has that feeling, if one might so say. She certainly has that psychic perception that this is not the place where she would get what she is in need of. And therefore she tells the sage, sorry, I cannot stay here. I must move on. I must find my soul. The sage understands it. But from the mental worlds around, there are people, there are different types of voices, there are different suggestions which keep on prompting her that Savitri is trying to do something which may not be really fulfilling to her. There is a derision in their voice. They even mock her and they tell her hauntingly, Who then is this? This lady, this girl who has come here, who is she? Who knows not that the soul is a least gland or a secretion of fault. After all, what is the soul? It is the product of biology. A gland, biological gland, is what gives rise to secretion. And when it becomes solid dot, a point or whatever, then that is what one would call it a soul. Is it that what Savitri is seeking? Is a least gland or a secretion of fault disquieting the same garment to the mind? The order of the mental world is disturbed by their soul. And how can that be satisfying to her? Disordering the function of the brain or a yearning lodged in nature's mortal house. It is her emotion, her desire, her ambition which is present in her house which is prompting her to go in search of her soul which is not really there at all. It is a product of mind. Or dream whispered in man's cave of hollow thought. Cave of hollow thought. You are living in that cave of thought which has no content. And it is a dream which is walking through that hollow which is telling you, no, there is nothing like a soul at all, you see. That is one voice coming from one part of the world or the mental world. 
and then there are other voices also taunting her all the way telling who would prolong his brief unhappy term or cling to living in a sea of death what is life here after all you are a small little part a small little island in the sea of death and it is that is you want to expand and grow in that that seems to be absurd according to him who would prolong his brief unhappy term you are living a world which is full of suffering of pain anityam asokam that is the world in which you are in it is transient and unhappy world and it is that she wants to prolong for what but others replied different voices are telling different things to savitri in different tones but with the same derision nay it is her spirit she seeks she does not want to stay here she is in search of a spirit but what is a spirit after all what is a spirit after all it is a splendid shadow it is just a bright shadow of the name of god god is there and his shadow is there and that is what you are calling spirit and sabitri is in search of that shadow looks to be little funny according to him a splendid shadow of the name of god there is no reality of god there at all it is a shadow cast in this world a formless luster from the ideal realm the spirit is the holy ghost of mind spirit is after all according to him the holy ghost of mind holy ghost is one element of the christian trinity god son and holy ghost all of them are one they are co substantial they are co eternal they are cool eternal all the while they are co equal co substantial co eternal holy ghost god and son there is still a difference between them to some extent the son is divine as well as human he comes here to redeem the suffering of the mortal creature here he accepts the punishment to remove the sin from the soul of man god is one who is there always now we can put that thing in a slightly different manner god son of god holy ghost we could consider them as the transcendental the universal and the eminent divine son who is an individual taken birth here in the mortal creation when he accepts the suffering of man here then he becomes the avatar the son of god when he comes here comes here as an avatar to redeem the sin of man 
His soul is the great father's crucified son. Mine is the soul's one parent. So after all, who is that son? Who is that Holy Ghost? It is the product of mind. There is nothing like the Holy Ghost, the father, the son. It is the product of mind. Mind is the soul's one parent is conscious cause. The ground on which trembles a brief passing light. The light is there, but when it comes here, it is getting sick and trembles with that. Mind, sole creator of the apparent world. Yes, the sole creation which you see here around, what's it after all? Who has made it? Not God. It is mind who has created this world. This is what one of the voices tells Savitri. All that is here is part of our own self. Our minds have made the world in which we live. So we are the creators of this world. Mind is the creator and it is in this creation that we move according to him. There is nothing like the Son, the Holy Spirit, God. They are creations of mind. They are imaginations of we small little creatures. That is one of the voices which dissuades Savitri going further. And then there is yet another, another with mystic and unsatisfied eyes who loved his slain belief and mourned his death. Who is this voice? He has slain whatever belief he had. He had until now something about things which he has no possession, but believed in their existence. He had that thing. Another with mystic, un, unsatisfied eyes, who loved his slain belief, he has killed his own belief. He has destroyed it. And what did he do? After killing his belief, he is mourning on its death. And he tells Savitri, is there one left after killing that belief? He wonders if there is still somebody who thinks that there can be something beyond this. Is there one left who seeks for a beyond? Can there be anything beyond that? Nobody had believed so far because the belief has been killed. And therefore he wonders how can there be someone who would believe in the beyond? Is there one left who seeks for a beyond? Can still the path be found? Yes, you might believe in it, but then will you be able to find a path to that beyond? That is his difficulty. Can still the path be found? Can, or can still be opened the gate to the beyond? Is it possible to reach the beyond? Can the path be found? Can the gate be opened and reach the beyond? He is wondering at that because he has slain his belief and therefore he is incredulous that someone can come here and search for the soul. All that is here is part of our own self. Our minds have made the world in which we live another with mystic and unsatisfied eyes who loved his slain belief and mourned its death. 
either one who seeks for a beyond can still the path be found open the gate that is his dilemma that here is this lady who is coming here and is wondering is it possible for her at all to reach beyond this place go beyond this place at all is that is a difficulty well that concludes the present section and now savitri will meet another set of people more encouraging people or the words of intuition and prompting her and telling her how she could proceed further and find her soul <laughs>